Hey everyone, Jason Long here from with Brainleaf, and tonight I'm gonna tell you how to always get paid. This is so important because so many times I hear this from people that you know, people running agencies, running dev teams, running running any kind of service business, man, so many of them are so afraid to talk about money with the clients. They don't want to ask for payment. They don't want to talk about payment. They just want to do the work and they just want to get paid for it. But when things, when you don't get paid, oh, it can be real bad. It can be so bad. So I'm going to tell you tonight how to always get paid. All right. First off, I got my notes here, so I so I don't miss anything for you guys. All right, first off, payment terms and late fees have to be in your contract. They absolutely must be in your contract. If you look in Brainleaf, you'll see a section that has uh, a list of contracts and all the different stuff that goes into those contracts, and you can pull out late fee uh, stuff in there, milestone stuff, payment terms, all of that. You know, all those clauses from the contract. So. First things first, if you don't have late fees and, and payment terms in that contract, you don't have anything to stand on. So it has to be in there. That's number one. Number two, ask for, don't assume billing information. If you're the project manager or you're a sole entrepreneur or it doesn't matter who you are. When you're working with a new client, don't assume that that person you're talking to is the one paying the bills. Make sure to ask, like, am I sending this to a billing department? Who am I sending it to? How do they like to pay for things? If, if you have a, a credit card option or you have a credit card, uh, sorry, credit card or a cash option or a bank transfer option or whatever options, sorry, a check option, et cetera, in your system, make sure that you clarify how you're getting paid before the whole project has started. That you're gonna get paid on these milestones for this amount of money. If things change, then it's gonna change in these ways. And they're gonna pay you with a bank transfer on it, you know, once again, payment terms on like a net 15 or a net seven or a net 30 or a net 60 or whatever it is. You're gonna get paid on those things. And you also have to make sure that you know who's supposed to get it, be getting this email. Like that person that, that is uh, paying you, is there a backup person? Is there another person that's supposed to get it? Is the person you're working with directly like one contact and then there's a billing liaison contact as well? Who's supposed to get this? So something that I really like to do is get all that information and then send an email to both people saying, so you know, this is how we, we understand that we're supposed to bill you guys for this project. It's in the contract as well, but I just wanna make sure that everybody's on the same page about how this thing is getting done. So, so, so important because on so many big projects, project managers will assume that I'm just sending the bill over here, but it's that billing person. And if you send the bill now and then, you know, Sally and billing is, is on vacation and she doesn't get it for seven days, but anyway, or she just doesn't get it at all because it never went to her. You have some some problems like 30 days later you haven't received your payment things are behind and now they're just starting to process your payment and it could have been avoided really easily by just clarifying those points up front all right after sending the first bill ask if they got it in fact ask if they got it every time you talk after well not every time after they you know if they've said yeah i got the bill and that's fine but the thing is in things like fresh books and quickbooks and many other billing platforms you can see if they open that email you can see if they got that email you can see if they open that email and you can see if they looked at that bill always 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 ask them because Sometimes they'll, they'll come back and they'll say, oh no, I didn't get a, a bill. And, and then you'll say, you know, then that, now there's a problem, you gotta like figure that part out. Sometimes they'll say, no, I didn't get that bill. And you know damn well they got that bill because you saw them open that bill. You saw the, that they had opened it. So the next step is gonna say is, how can I help you? So this is really important. You should not, don't, don't come in and just say like, I haven't heard from you, where's my damn money? It needs every single time you ask for money, ask how you can help. Always start with how can I help you? Did you get the, did you get the bill? Do you have our address? Do you have the payment method? Do, did it go to the right person? How else can I be of assistance getting this, uh, getting this taken care of? 
start like that is so much easier and so much better than starting with like, where's my money? Because that doesn't get, that, that's, that's not a great way to have a relationship, right? Ask how you can help. All right. Um, send reminders. All right, now this is really, this is a little bit of a catch because some customers pay on time every single time. They are like super diligent, they're always on time, they're really good about it, and if you start sending those guys reminders, they're gonna get upset. They're gonna be, they're gonna be kind of pissed because they'll be like, look, I pay you every time on time. And the answer, and, and really, they do. They pay you on time every time. So why are you sending them a reminder? But then there's some other, you know, other systems out there. Uh, there's other clients out there that need those reminders. We used to use uh, what was it called? Late late fee, late, late fee reminder, which is a plugin for QuickBooks, and it would auto send those reminders. And it was okay, but at the end of the day, what we preferred was to work with our clients and build that relationship with those clients by calling and reminding them. So if you're calling people to remind them before the bill is due, over and over, or making sure they got it, double checking with them, all of that, it's very rare that, you, that it comes to the end and, and you don't get your payment on time. In fact, it almost never happens, only with real serious problem clients. But even with those real serious problem clients, if you keep on top of them like that, you almost always get your money anyway. Okay, so reminders. Uh, let's see. All right, next thing. If if you're getting to the end, like you know that this thing is due, or let's say it's actually it's overdue. So the client hasn't paid you the first day, right? Call them up. Hey, I, I, we didn't get our payment today. How can I help you? Once again, ask for help. How can I help you get us that payment? What do we need to do? And if you've done a good job reminding them, they should, they should know that that payment is due. A lot of times, if they'll just say they're sorry and they'll get you the payment. But you have to make, th this is probably one of the most important things. You have to give them a clear consequence. It has to be clear, all right? It has to be clear. What that means is we haven't received your payment. If we don't receive your payment within X amount of time, let's say a day, two days, five days, whatever it is for you, we have to stop work, we have to shut you off, we have to do whatever. If you don't, if the, the consequence is, if you, or the, the whole thing is, if you don't pay us, we do this thing. That's the consequence. And then the most important thing, is you have to do the thing. You have to shut them off. You have to stop work. You have to send them a message saying, we stopped work, we're expecting your payment, or we can't start on the next work until we receive your payment, or whatever it may be, uh, and now your deadline has been moved back, your, your, you know, whatever the other consequences of them not paying are, you have to inform them of that at that time. If you don't do that, it's gonna be so much a pain for you. It's gonna be so hard. So clear consequence, then actually do it. And do it the first time, and do it the first time every time. It's just like working with a five-year-old. If, if, if you let them get away with it, they'll continue to do it over and over and over and over, and it will never end. So just the first time, every time, they get that warning, they don't pay it, done. It's, it's over. So that's really, really important. All right. Now, as you're going through this process, they may add things to your scope of work. Like you, they're gonna change scope of work or statement of work, and as they're changing your scope of work, it's really important that you make sure to say, to go into the scope, take a look at what they're changing, adjust the hours, show them the difference, show them the change in the timeline, and talk to them about their new payment. And this is probably one of, this is actually, one of the top things that I see people losing money on is they don't talk to their, their customers about the change in their scope of work and they don't talk to them about the change in the, in the timeline and when the new payment will do will be due and how much that new payment will be. And when they don't do that, 
that money gets lost, or that client gets upset, or they there's now there's mismanaged expectations. So you have to determine like, is this thing going to go into phase two? Is it going to stay in phase one or whatever phase you're in? Is it going to get added to your next bill? Is it going to get added to the final bill? As soon as they add that stuff, you have to do that, and you have to remind them that you did that. So, so you don't, it doesn't have to be like the same kind of reminders over and over. It just needs to be an email that says, we did these things, here's the new payment, it's gonna be attached to this bill, here's how much it is, you still owe this amount, and et cetera. If you do that, you almost always get paid, okay? So, all right, what happens if you still don't get paid? Now, the first thing is, if you set up your contracts right, where you're always working on your customer's money, meaning that you have an upfront payment that covers your first set of work, <laughs> that covers your first set of work, and then the next payment is gonna cover your next set of work, then you're always working on your customer's money. You're not working on your own money. In other words, you're not going in debt to build this project. So you should always do that. Like you should never just be working for free out there. But if you still, so when you stop, by the way, you're still ahead of the game pretty much. So, and then um, if they still don't pay, sorry, I got off, uh, lost my train of thought there. If, if, uh, if they still don't pay after that, then you, uh, you can do things like um, shut them down. Set, uh, if you shut them down, by the way, at tack on an additional fee to get them started again. It's really important, make sure that's actually in your contract. I forgot about that earlier. So a fee to get started, if they don't pay and you have to stop, they gotta pay for that because you have to reassign your resources, you have to change things around. You can't just start right back up. You have, uh, you've moved on to other things. That's their problem and they have to pay for it. And then finally, if they just don't wanna pay and, and it's just not, not working out, you can take them to small claims court. If you've broken your, your payments up into, into reasonable increments, it's never gonna be, hopefully, uh, it, it depends. It really depends on who you are, what you do. But for us, it's rarely, let, it's rarely more than $25,000 at a time. So, in fact, it's almost never more than $25,000 payment at any given time. And as long as that's the case, you can generally just take them to small claims court. In, in 20 years of doing this, I've taken one group to, to court for non-payment. And it was because it was a ridiculous situation. And it, it was because the CEO signed a thing, said we're gonna do all this stuff, we got started on it, she gave us a payment, we, we actually went a little over, we worked, we did it the way I told you not to do it, and this is where I learned not to do it. We went into, we started working on our dime to do their work because they didn't pay us on time. And then we're working and sending them emails, sending them emails, requesting payment, doesn't come in, and then the chief operating officer who happened to be the CEO's husband comes in and says I didn't approve this it can't go through and we pull out the contract we said we have your CEO's signature we did all the work she asked for and he says well I didn't approve it so it doesn't count and we were like yeah that's you still have to pay for it your CEO signed it like it doesn't get any higher than that and they ended up like really just trying to screw us on things and it, it was not about the money it was about the principle, and that's that's the only time I've ever gone to court. Uh, but you can take someone to small claims court if if they still don't pay you. However, if you go through all of these processes, if you do all of this stuff, if you cover all of these bases, you never really have to. In fact, it should never ever happen if you do these things that we just talked about. So that's it. That's how you always get paid. I hope this is helpful and. Let me know if you have any questions, put them in the comments, talk to me about it, send me a message. I'd love to help you guys out. Y'all have a great day. Thanks so much.